I'm trying to figure out how to mount this front fender to this fork stabilizer in a way that you don't see the screws. So I've been trying out a few different things today. My first idea was to use little brackets like this that I've cut from this 16 millimeter steel bar. They can sit right in here. I thought I would weld those to the fender and then use a little plate on top that would then clamp everything together. Well, this idea will probably work. I don't really like it because it's not the cleanest solution. So how I think I'm gonna do it now is to fill these holes and then I'm gonna weld in some threads to the fender and then this can sit on here. I'm also thinking since this is big and ugly, I'm just gonna trim this up make this a little nicer looking. But before we start with that, I would like to make this a little slimmer and cut a bit off the edges because this barely fits in there. I feel like it looks too chunky for the front wheel. The fork stabilizer has three steps in here and I would like the fender to end with this step. So I somehow need to figure out how I can measure the distance. If I measure from here to there, that is 10 millimeters. That should give me a good estimate of how much I need to cut away. Next, I need to determine the center line. I'm just gonna transfer that to the inside depending on from where I look, I might need that. These two center lines will help me when I align the two pieces so that I always get the right fitment. And now I'm just gonna measure 12 millimeters from the side and that's gonna be what we cut away. I noticed that it doesn't really sit dead center in the middle. It's a little off to the right. So I'm just quickly checking. Left side is two millimeters shorter than the right side. All right, I've made two little marks that show me how much I still have to take away. So I'm just gonna follow those through and then cut that away. All right, for some reason, my microphone kind of broke. I don't know what's going on. I hope that the rest worked. To be on the safe side, I'm now switching to my camera microphone, so the sound might change a bit. But now we have to focus on the fender. I do like this size at the moment, but I want to make sure that it's equal all around. Right, that's what I'm going for. to secure it on the bike when you want to check the fitment is a magnet that fits underneath the torque stabilizer and just holds this in place. Anyways, I like the fitment. I like how this turned out. What I'm gonna do next is to shorten that ugly thing, but I have a question. I don't really know what type of material this is. Why I'm not sure what material this is, is that I have a magnet and to the side, it doesn't really stick at all where it's still shiny, but to the top where it's not shiny anymore, it actually sticks, but just very lightly, as you can see. If I put the magnet on the steel fender, it's much harder to actually get it off. So I guess I need to get some help to understand what material this is. So I went to Andy's place, asked him, and he was like, yeah, this is probably stainless steel. It's not magnetic, but it's relatively heavy. If this was galvanized steel, it would be magnetic. And if it was aluminum, it would be much lighter and you would see it from the surface structure. It has all of these structures at the top and on the sides. So I want to find a line that actually makes sense and slows well. Right here, there's a tiny change of direction. So I'm gonna start here Go up. 
well, I just thought of, and I don't know how much impact it actually has, is that it might be smart to weld these holes shut before cutting all of this off, because that way I have more material towards the end, which hopefully helps with heat distribution. So what I'm gonna do for these is just weld in some stainless washers. I've quickly bought some threaded rods that we can now use to prevent the fork stabilizer from warping. The holes align more with the center line, so now let's wipe this up. This is a very good example of how the heat affects the piece. I've put a tack on this side and the heat on that side makes the plate lift up. So that's what I mean when pieces warp during welding, which is why we always want to have a tack on this side and at least on the opposite side. Right, I'm now gonna put two tacks on the bottom side. All right, so the welds look okay, I would say. <laughs> This actually has a good shape to it. Marking with the painter's tape worked pretty well. It's almost flat all around. All right, this is done. I'm very happy with how this looks. I think actually putting on the front fender it always looks better with the fender on. So that looks very nice. It feels nice. There are no sharp edges anymore. And now we get to the actually challenging part. I think the best way to place it is have the forks as the center point and then have the front fender sit wide in the middle. Just drawing along on the inside where the fender actually meets the stabilizer, where they sit nice and flush. Yeah. This workbench was one of the best things I've built. It's so handy to not have to crawl around on the floor. And I was hesitant because I don't know how long I stay here actually. So I didn't think that it would be worth building a new workbench, but it actually is. It's so worth it. quickly measuring how much thread I need to cut. We also need to keep in mind that the tire depends when you ride the bike. So we're gonna go four plus eight plus one, 30 millimeters. I quickly want to try welding those onto this steel plate just to dial in the settings of the welder. Unfortunately, I didn't get the perfect filler rod for this job. This is regular stainless steel filler rod that you would use to weld stainless steel and stainless steel together. These are stainless steel threads and the fender is regular carbon steel. I have to do it this way because I can paint the fender but I can't paint the threads and I don't want the threads to rust so I need to use stainless steel for that. The problem with welds like this where you weld regular carbon steel and stainless steel together is that the stainless steel can start to rust afterwards and especially the area where you've welded, which is why there's a special type of filler rod, which is called 309 SI, but it's very hard to get. I asked Andy how he would do it and he just said, take regular stainless steel filler rod. It's not perfect, but it's much better than the normal filler rod for carbon steel. Dude, how am I gonna get this on there without moving it? Here we go. Nice. <laughs> that worked so much better than I thought it would work. The fitment is perfect. Well, let's check first. This is so amazing. This is what it looks like. I've tacked it all around. Let's see if we can tighten this properly without ripping this screw out. That should be good. This is the top side. You can definitely see a little bit where I've welded.
Right, the front fender is installed, which actually looks very, very good. I'm so happy with how this went. For once, nothing went wrong. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you maybe learned something and I see you in the next one.